If you're suffering from self-doubt within your career, I want you to know that you don't have to. Because in this video, I'm going to be walking you through three tips on how to overcome imposter syndrome. Hi everyone, welcome back to Hills Consulting. My name is Brittany Hills and I am a career coach and the founder of Hills Consulting, a business dedicated to helping you gain confidence in your career through resume, interview, and career coaching services. Imposter syndrome is a psychological experience where no matter how successful you are, you believe that your success is gonna be taken away from you at any moment because in a room full of qualified people, you believe that you are an imposter. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through three actionable steps on how to overcome imposter syndrome and stop doubting yourself. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe down below to this channel. Also, follow Hales Consulting on Instagram for more career tips. Let's get started. Have you ever been invited into a room or program or meeting and you felt so intimidated by the people in that meeting because you thought they were so much smarter than you or better than you or funnier or more attractive or whatever it may be, that, my friend, is imposter syndrome. It's the idea that you keep getting invited into rooms, into spaces, into programs, but you think you're not qualified to be there because everybody else is better than you. I'll be honest, we all experience imposter syndrome at some point in another because we all doubt ourselves. We're humans, that's what we do, right? But the reality of it is that if you're doing this on a daily basis, even, even on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, that could be potentially debilitating to your career. And I'll be honest, my solution to overcoming imposter syndrome has nothing to do with thinking that you're better than other people. The solution is all about knowing what you bring to the table and presenting that with confidence and being incredibly confident in your uniqueness. Because as I said, there's always gonna be someone in the room that's incredibly accomplished, incredibly talented, well-dressed, beautiful, handsome, all of the above, right? But until you realize that you were also invited into that room because you're smart, accomplished, amazing, beautiful, handsome, well-dressed, all of the above, you're gonna have a really hard time progressing in your career and I don't want that for you. So in this video, let's go ahead and quickly walk through three actionable steps on how to overcome imposter syndrome. So the first step on how to overcome imposter syndrome is to identify your strengths and your identities. One of the main reasons why you're probably struggling with imposter syndrome is because you do not know what you bring to the table. And in my opinion, the two things that people bring to every table are their strengths and their identities. And when I say strengths, I'm talking about the things that you are tangibly really good at. So are you a great presenter? Can you build great presentations? Are you a public speaker? Do you design graphics? Are you really great at content strategy? Think about your strengths or skills and write down three of them. And when I say identities, I'm talking about what makes you, you. It could be your socioeconomic background, where you went to school, your race, your gender, your orientation, whatever it is that you resonate with the most, pick three of those and really think hard about them. If you're like me, it could even be that you're bald. Who knows? <laughs> that is an identity and it's something that I bring to the table, depending on what table it is. Your identities and your perspective allow you to tell a story that somebody else at that table may not be able to tell. And something to also think about is the three strengths or the three identities slash perspectives that you bring to the table will be different depending on which table or which room you're entering. So keep that in mind when you are entering a new program or a new team or a new meeting. Because the strengths that you bring to a boardroom with executives may be very different than the strengths that you bring to a room full of your peers. So the next time you feel intimidated in a room full of really accomplished and smart people, Remind yourself of the unique strengths and perspectives and identities that you have and stand firm in them. The second step to overcoming imposter syndrome is to present your strengths and identities. So not only is it important to identify the strengths and the identities that you bring to the table, it's also important to bring them there, present them in a manner with confidence. I totally get that it is so uncomfortable to speak about ourselves sometimes or present or humbly brag, 
but it's important because you not only have to realize how great you are, but you also have to make sure that you stand confident in showing other people. So let's say that you're invited to a program with a bunch of accomplished teachers and you're one of those accomplished teachers and you're there and you feel super intimidated by how accomplished everyone is. And then you quickly remember, oh my gosh, I have the strength of graphic design. And there's a project that comes up during that program that allows you to flex that skill and that strength. And everyone is so blown away by your graphic design skills. That, my friend, is a prime example of overcoming imposter syndrome. So in that moment, you quickly combated imposter syndrome by remembering the skill set that you brought to the table and presenting it and acting upon it. Because combating imposter syndrome isn't about being in a room full of amazing teachers and thinking that you're better than them. It's about knowing what you bring to the table, identifying what you bring to the table, and presenting it with confidence. So again, imposter syndrome is about being in a room full of people and thinking that you're an imposter and you are not qualified to be there. And in order to remind yourself that you are not only qualified, but deserve to present your qualifications, identify what those qualities are and actively present them so that you can keep reminding yourself, I deserve to be here and I need to demand that seat at the table. Now, the third and final step to combating imposter syndrome is to expect mistakes and to accept compliments. Now that you're finally combating imposter syndrome and fighting it every day, there are two things that may come up and trigger your imposter syndrome again. And those two things are mistakes and compliments. The reason why making mistakes can trigger imposter syndrome is because you feel like, oh my gosh, someone is going to now realize that I'm an imposter because I'm not perfect or I made a mistake. And I'm here to tell you, one, nobody's perfect you're not perfect and second it's okay to make mistakes and you are going to make mistakes so in order to continuously keep combating imposter syndrome remind yourself and expect that you're going to make mistakes and people need to understand that and stand firm in your mistake realize that it's a lesson and that no one thinks you're perfect and they're anticipating that you're going to make mistakes now the way in which compliments can trigger imposter syndrome is because sometimes when you receive a compliment and you're self-doubting you're like oh thank you but I think I could have done this better or thank you but I could have I think I could have done that better that my friend is a trigger warning for imposter syndrome because you're starting to doubt yourself again so in order to keep combating imposter syndrome just make sure you're saying thank you when someone gives you a compliment just say thank you that's it accept the compliment and keep it pushing because the second you start to say thank you but you're starting to re you're you're triggering yourself again and you're heading down that path of self-doubt which is so not necessary because you've made it so far and I don't want you to get triggered so just say thank you accept the compliment and keep it pushing so again even after combating imposter syndrome you can get triggered again when compliments come up or when mistakes come up so continuously keep reminding yourself that you are going to make mistakes. That's okay because you're not perfect and no one expects you to be. And when you receive a compliment, just say thank you, accept it, and keep it pushing because there's no need to be negative or self-doubting. As someone who used to suffer greatly from imposter syndrome, I want you to know that when you're invited into a room, into a table, into an event, it was not by a mistake and you were invited because you're accomplished and deserve to be there. So remember what you bring to the table, speak about it, present it with confidence and anticipate that you're going to make mistakes because you're not perfect and that's okay. And when you receive a compliment, accept it and know that you're worthy of it. As a career coach, I would love to help you understand what your strengths and your identities are. So feel free to email me at info at hailsconsulting.com or if you want to set up some one-on-one -on -one personal time, you can do so by finding more information down in the description box below. If you've recently overcome dealing with imposter syndrome, comment down below, how did you do it? We all want to hear from you as well. Do not forget to subscribe, like this video, turn on that notification bell. Also share this video with anyone who you know would benefit from it. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!